Welcome to Expert Opinion, the branding business forum where leaders share their views, insights, and experiences from the world of B2B branding. And now, here's your host. Welcome to Expert Opinion. I'm Ryan Rikus, and today's show is focused on the global branding needs of B2B companies. Today's guest is Mark Lethbridge. We're speaking with Mark from his office in London, where he's the CEO of Gravity Global, a highly respected B2B marketing communications firm. In addition, Mark and Tom Golland are the founding partners of Branding Business EMEA, where they run the London office and oversee the regional offices in Copenhagen, Munich, Dubai, and Johannesburg. Mark, welcome to Expert Opinion. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, delighted to be a guest on the show. Great. Well, some, for some background to our listeners, uh, Mark's firm has collaborated with branding business over the last 10 years to serve global clients, and starting with American Airlines Cargo. Over time, it's been clear that companies doing business internationally needed a brand strategy partner that could offer representation to key markets around the world. And so, thus is the uh, genesis of our firms working together and forming branding business. But let's get um, to the topic of the moment. Uh, this show comes around the heels of the Brexit, the British exit from the European Union. So time will really tell its true impact, but while it's fresh, what are your thoughts on how this will affect UK businesses selling internationally and those selling into the UK? Uh, well, of course, that's been the uh, topic of uh, conversation and, and pretty much the only topic of conversation. And, and the truth is um, we need to let the dust settle. Uh, the, the new prime minister um, when finally in the, in the chair will hopefully negotiate you know, the terms of the exit and uh, to, to, to make it a, a mutually beneficial um, program. Right now, I think that in truth, there's a lot of anger. But we need to let things settle. I mean, in terms of the UK, um, you know, it, it will be cheaper to buy goods uh, from the UK because the, the you know the, the huge currency fluctuations that have happened of late as a result of Brexit. Um, you know, we're seeing currency at the the uh, the pound at its lowest level in about 35 years there is no answer to the to that question at the moment um because it will unfold in the in the coming months yes time will tell um we were together in london just a couple of weeks ago and uh, everything was uncertain at that point it was just days before the election or before the uh, i'm sorry the uh, the vote and um it will definitely be interesting to see it, it, it um, the impact. Will. It certainly will, Ryan. I mean, uh, Richard Branson, somebody that I'm sure you're uh, aware of, has been uh, you know, speaking to the, uh, the the possible new prime minister and trying to uh, overturn the uh, referendum because it was meant. You know, referendum is there f um, as an advisory piece. There is some debate about whether the decision uh, be, you know, can be overturned, because the truth is global businesses here, you know, are not, you know, weren't supporters of, uh, you know, of, of an exit. They wanted to remain part of Europe. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as I say, uh, hopefully we can navigate a way through this and, um, you know, come out with a with a program that, that suits suits everybody. Well, let's shift topics on, speak a little bit more about what's happening in the, in the world of um, global branding. And the reality is that clients have told us that there's a big gap between regional brand specialty consultancy firms and those that have also a larger scale more consumer-oriented global networks. And uh, the, the clients are saying that neither one really truly understands the complex B2B marketplace. And uh, now to be clear, for the benefit of our listeners, this is not going to be a commercial on the benefits of branding business, but rather uh, we're trying to give a viewpoint of what we're hearing from global clients. So we'll try to represent their views accurately. But uh, Mark, to that topic of the gap between small local firms and multinational firms focused on consumer, what are clients telling you and, and how can branding business fill that gap? 
you know, what you're seeing in the U.S. is exactly what we're seeing here in Europe and, uh, you know, the wider uh, EMEA. You know, as these uh, global businesses um, look to build, uh, you know, consistent brand strategies across the world, um, it becomes a compromise for them. They have to either consider larger consumer-based brand strategy firms and then, you know, do they really understand the complexity of the, uh, you know, uh, of the marketplace of B2B? Or do they try and, um, you know, appoint regional consultancies which probably don't have the bandwidth or reach to do a, a fully global job? And that you're always, you know, businesses are always then under threat that one particular region may say, well, that works only for your part of the world, but certainly not in, in our part. So it is, um, it is a challenge, and the, 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 the reason branding business you know, came together, because I can't name a branding firm that works globally that specializes in business to business. So let's just talk about the, uh, the topic of B2B. Why is it important for a client, client's partner to be an expert in B2B? And, and maybe you can offer some of the key differentiators between B2B and consumer branding? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, hotly debated, obviously. Um, but, you know, let, the, 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 the truth is that, um, you know, B2B is a more complicated market. You're dealing with uh, multi-tiered stakeholder groups that each one forms a different role in the decision making and the decision making is a lot longer it's a lot longer process it's more considered than the consumer purchase you know if you're buying um, a business product you normally have a board to justify that purchase to so it's a much more rational and less emotional although emotion comes into it it is a different landscape and it does need a different set of qualities and uh, a, a different set of skills and somebody that, that is familiar with the, those stakeholder groups and the, the, the and influencing that longer you know decision making process and it's about giving the right levels of information at the right time and that's what business to business is all about and that's that's the the main difference i would say between business to business and consumer it's a much more complicated more considered purchase arena and needs a different set of skills yes yeah, so on top of that you got channels of distribution uh as you mentioned uh, as well as a considered purchase often somebody's jobs on the line whoever recommends a particular strategy the stakes are very very high and the c-suite and, and certainly marketers are uh, under more pressure than ever and so from a client point of view maybe you can offer some of the challenges and, and also opportunities that clients face today when they're evaluating their corporate brand strategy certainly i see this in me to be that when you talk about brands, um, you know, it, to be to be firms. Certainly at the uh, CEO level, although they acknowledge having a brand is, um, you know, is an important asset, there is a lack of belief in organisations about the real business impact that branding can make. And so, one of the challenges that we see is explaining to the C-suite that branding is a strategic filter for the whole business. It will guide the growth strategy. It will help their M&A strategy. And it's far more than a logo and a tagline, which some businesses still think that's what branding, branding is about. And the second, the second element is typically when you look at the B2B market, Businesses still struggle with understanding competitive, you know, making competitive claims. And we see that uh, proposition development, you know, building the argument is often driven internally without robust validation from the external marketplace. One of the challenges is how businesses 
how businesses start to believe that brand building really does have a real business impact and also how best to strengthen propositions to give businesses a clear competitive advantage. They are some of the challenges. The other big challenge that uh, we see, and in fact uh, there's been a huge uh, consumer conference in the south of France just recently with the marketing and advertising world, and they had people from Pepsi and some of the big global firms saying that you know, measuring the impact is still um, a black art. No mm -hmm. one seems to understand how to evidence brand strategy. And that's what businesses want. And certainly that's what CEOs want. They're, they're not interested in an organization delivering a set of marketing deliverables. They're looking for certainty and they're looking for outcomes of those programs. And that's one of the things, certainly uh, within the branding business group, that is, you know, at the heart of what we're trying to do, to give businesses more certainty that their brand strategies will deliver the business outcomes they're looking for. Yeah, we use the term evidence-based insights. And so we as well are seeing that um, with this pressure to deliver and the desire to have insights that are actually fact-based or uh, offer some level of proof that uh, value proposition has relevancy and differentiation from the customer point of view is more important than ever. And so that's why we developed, of course, the brand performance platform. But maybe you can speak a little bit about your thoughts on technology-based research and the opportunity to present these fact-based insights. Certainly speaking, somebody who's been in branding for 30 odd years, the game changer really is technology. It's really allowing us to deliver another level of rigor to our strategies. Uh, and that's really what businesses are starting to respond to now. So technology, as I say, is a game changer. And leveraging that to build strategies, for me, is the way forward. Well, and as you mentioned, if done properly, the corporate brand strategy really has an impact throughout the entire organization and is certainly not just marketing based. Uh, in order for a qualified brand promise to be brought forth, it has to be delivered by everyone throughout the organization. So certainly that means operations has to be involved, uh, sales even has to have a financial buy-in in order for it to be delivered. So the need for that clarity at the corporate level seems to be, as you mentioned, also in preparation for potential M&A, even more important now than ever with the level of competition out there. So um, let's chat a little bit about the role of global brand strategy. So an organization at the headquarters needs corporate brand strategy, but then it needs to be delivered across the entire sales teams across, across the world. Let's just chat a little bit about your perspective on this need for clarity and consistency at the corporate level and then how to incorporate brand strategy with business strategy and then how to ensure it consistently around the world and, and apply the regional nuances. And you have a lot of experience in this area and I know firms specifically hire you for this. Why don't you chat a little bit about that? That's a very big topic you've just given me, but let me, <laughs> let me speak to it as best I can work for brands that operate in multi-markets. So, um, you know, 56, 60 countries is not unusual f for the type of work that we are doing. And the aligning a brand strategy is all about, as you say, is about enabling the business to achieve its business goals. And when you have a fragmented brand story in various markets, you are creating, um, you're creating what we call leakage points in your brand storytelling. So it's not consistent. It doesn't give clarity. And when there's clarity, it builds confidence and confidence builds trust. And ultimately, that's what a brand is there to do, to build trust in your in your stakeholder group. So aligning that story is always a challenge because local nuances have to be considered. 
But in my experience, in large corporations, there is a lot of retaliation against aligning brand strategies because they they argue that it doesn't work in their market. Well, the truth is it does work in various markets if done correctly. And so it is important that whatever brand strategy you are developing, that it's tested, that it's validated, and that you have people on the ground that can adjust those um, the structure of it and the um, messaging platform to suit the local nuances without changing the whole story. I think that's the key right there. As marketing and creative firms, often they're accused of adding their own level of creativity to uh, an existing corporate brand and therefore diluting it, as you mentioned. I think the key is to adhere to the global and corporate strategy, but then apply the nuances on a, on a local level. And that's an art in itself. That's why it's important to have a partnership with firms that uh, can do just that. And uh, I think that's a, a unique offering. So, Well, I think the other thing to consider, a message to uh, the CEOs that are out there, is think of the cost of uh, and duplication of creating different strategies, different brand strategies for different markets. And ultimately, does it help the brand have a strong and clear perception on the global stage? The answer has to be no. And it's much more costly. Let's chat a little bit about how firms, organizations, global organizations are, are looking at firms to partner with. There are a number of different options. Have a, a, uh, a suite of firms, whether they're digital specialists or advertising specialists or branding specialists, or you go with a, a large overarching firm that can deliver, deliver it all. I think what you've done now with your business model is kind of unique in that you have Gravity Global as a world-class marketing communications firm and you have branding business as the corporate brand strategy component. What we've heard from clients is that typically is either one or the other, and uh, they're typically looking for specialists. Can you talk a little bit about the benefits of having the two firms as well as the benefits to clients specifically on that area of expertise in, in each of these two camps? Yes, obviously we're an advocate of delivering what we call the complete supply chain in branding and communications. And the, the simple reason is that the different elements are better connected. When you involve a broader group that are trying to establish their own position within the relationship, they tend to twist their own particular element slightly differently to demonstrate their intellectual prowess. <laughs> we completely understand that, but it doesn't help the brand develop this consistency, this clarity, and make it coherent across all the, all the different markets and, and business streams. Having somebody that can supply the complete value chain, for me, makes absolute sense. And then you overlay with um, the ability to work with people that you know and trust and implement that in other markets like we have with the uh, US and UK, but also now you take a look at how it can be delivered in um, Asia Pacific or in Latin America, having the ability to deliver upon brand promise in, uh, in that local area without overstepping the bounds and trying to uh, add its own form of creativity, I think is, is really important. Collaboration is key in any business of, you know, that operates in today's world. We collaborate so that we can have representation, but we do that using a set framework. Mm -hmm. So we're not recreating different storytelling or different messages. We have a one framework that all the offices around the world works to so that we get alignment. And that makes a huge difference. You know, we're operating in multi-markets, in different geographies. We'll bring those groups together. We'll agree the framework, the different elements to the brand structure, work out what that messaging should be, address the nuances in the local markets, 
and so it's built from really one team even though we might be in different parts of the world the, you know the spirit of collaboration is a key aspect mm -hmm. to delivering that and i think that's what we've got uh both within gravity global and branding business yeah with one common process and one common platform to work and collaborate in. I think that's really, really important as well. It is, and just the re the reason that even if you gave, so if, if you decide to have a fragmented supply chain to deliver your branding and communication strategies, even if you deliver the, um, the frameworks, the message platforms, and all the uh, guidelines to deliver that brand consistently, what happens every single time is misinterpretation, trying to add their own local nuance, or it's positioned as a local nuance, but in effect, it's not. It's just trying to demonstrate their worthiness within that supply chain by adding some additional element to the uh, to the messaging and to the delivery mm -hmm. but of course what that's doing is making the brand weaker yeah, it's diluting it and so we see that a lot so as a result we've built a solution that doesn't end up doing that well mark we're almost out of time i got a last question for you i'd like to just chat a little bit about uh, trends and uh, we spoke about some for example the trend for organizations to have um, fact-based insights uh, through through technology uh, technology that's informed through um, or research that's informed through technology what else are you seeing uh, as you travel around the globe certainly the world's gotten smaller in terms of uh, companies can work and do business anywhere in the world but uh, the pressure for that global growth is increasing aside from the research trend what else are you seeing out there i think branding firms get pigeonholed into being seen as developing logos and taglines and the truth is nobody buys creativity anymore in terms of developing guidelines and uh, style guides and, and logos. That's not where the value is. What our clients are looking for is help with their business strategy, as I said earlier, and to deliver outcomes so that they're looking for the brand to have a real impact on their business achievements. Mm -hmm. The other things that we are seeing is how do they leverage technology? How do they leverage digital technology? And we hear this um, every single organization we we go to today about their digital transformation programs that's a big challenge for for businesses uh, today more and more businesses we speak to are looking at the global marketplace so business globalization I don't need to tell the, the you know, listeners is a big trend and we're always helping brands move into new markets to build strategies that will help them be successful in those markets uh, and even new products in new markets so that is a another you know big trend that we're seeing business globalization but we, we all know about that mobility is another topic that keeps you know coming up on how businesses and brands should deal with mobility and also the fragmentation of customer sets customer sets are broken up now they are not um, straightforward to connect with they form their own opinion groups it's harder to reach them and so getting getting messaging uh, delivered in a powerful way that changes behavior amongst the a fragmented customer set is a big challenge and so again we hear that a lot from our clients on how best do they build a brand strategy uh, and build a messaging uh, program with strong propositions that will create competitive um, you know create a competitive advantage in the various markets they're operating in that's uh, that's another challenge that we are we are seeing. So in a nutshell, technology, globalization, mobility, and fragmentation of customer segments, that is a big challenge. And delivering outcomes, not 
not a set of tools. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Yeah, on I guess another trend that we're seeing, and kind of one that rises a little bit above all these uh, very, very important uh, business components you just mentioned, is the the need for internalization and, and being able, you know, these organizations are comprised of a lot of people spread out across the, the world, and um, you know, certainly related to brand strategy, you know, you can focus on what you do in terms of how it relates to a business outcome and and how you do it, but. More importantly, it's the why, why you do it. That's that emotional connection that is the glue that holds an organization and the team and the people together. And that transcends boundaries, countries, geographies, and even sometimes cultures to be really that driving force, that emotional connection of a brand. I know you're passionate about this as well. Want to chat about that briefly? The why is obviously the toughest message for, for a brand to you know deliver, to work out. We all know that if you ask an organization what they do, uh, they're very good at that. You know, they can uh, tell you for ad infinitum, go on and on and on about what it is they do. Then they they may then go on and add how they do it major, marginally differently to their competitors. But the why they do it is always a bit vague. You know, one of the things that we focus on and we always ask our, our clients is you have to have a core purpose. Um, and people get confused between core purpose, vision, and mission. And they say, well, we have a vision, you know, but it's normally rooted in a financial objective, mm -hmm. you know, to be the world leader or uh, to be in the top three suppliers in the world. That's not a core purpose. You need something that's inspiring and motivating and gives your workforce a reason to come to work in the morning. And that is uh, often quite lacking in organizations. And certainly a core purpose that can be delivered succinctly is actually a brand truth that exists in the organization. So, you know, I've heard of organizations and they say, well, our core purpose is this, you know, to make lives better or, uh, you know, very highbrow purpose. But then when you look at the organization, it's not rooted in any brand truths. It's an aspiration, but it's an aspiration that is too far away from where the organization currently is. Core purpose is a tough one. And we have, within branding business, as you know, we have methodologies and uh, ways of driving that out from the C-suite so that it is credible within the organization. It's built on brand truths within the organization. And it ends up being inspiring and mainly inspiring to the workforce right. to give them a reason to come to work in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, it's true gold when you can uncover it. But as you just mentioned, it has to be authentic. Otherwise, people won't get their heads and their hearts around it. They won't believe it. And it won't really serve the purpose of being that motivational, that emotional connection to why they why they come to work every day and, and what what they're really accomplishing together as a team. So that, that becomes very, very powerful. Well, Mark, we could chat forever. We I could. really appreciate you being a guest and expert opinion. We're almost out of time. Any final thoughts or insights I can share with the listeners? What would be an interesting one if the listeners, if, if any of the uh, listeners believe about the core purpose thing I was saying? Look at your own organizations. Work out what the core purpose is. Do you have an inspiring, um, succinct statement that makes you want to come to work and that is rooted in a brand truth? If it's not, I'm always here. You've got my, you've got my number. All right. What a great way to, to close. Mark, again, thank you. That concludes our show for today. This is Ryan Rikus, and you've been listening to another edition of Expert Opinion, a brand new business forum where thought leaders share their point of view. If you'd like to listen to past shows or read our blog series, visit brandingbusiness.com. Until our next show, grow your business by living your brand promise.